Hi, hi everyone. I hope I am audible. Let me just check. Okay, wait. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's start this one. So today I'll be discussing about the sense organ I. Okay. So yes, so before I start, let me introduce myself. I am Vani Kari, Biology Educator at An Academy. I am an engineer with bachelor's and master's degree in biotechnology and a BA degree. Also founder of a startup where I grow microgreens by vertical farming technology. So you can join with us in Telegram. So for homework and class notes, you can join the channel Vani Kari ICSC class 9 and 10. So for Telegram channel of an academy ICSC and ISC both. So you can uh, follow this link. So the link you will find in the description box. Okay. So you can click on the link and join the channel. Okay. So up that updates regarding the classes will be available there. Then also we are conducting a free classes on an academy platform which we call as a special classes okay so there you have a, a chat option a emoji option so live real-time interaction using the chat and the emoji so this you can do so let's say you can interact with the educator then you know you can interact with the uh, learners also if a discussion session is going on so all these options are available and you know uh, there is a chance that your question might might get lost if you are uh, chatting I mean if you are commenting it in the chat section so what you can do is so there is a question tab also which is available okay so you can type in your question attach an image and you can send it to the educator during a live session and the educator is going to get a, a notification that the learner has asked the doubt and they'll be clearing your doubts okay and live poll options for quizzes available so you know we will be showing a question okay so question and you know options will be there and we'll be conducting a poll so you can choose the option i mean answer also there so quiz option is available so that you know you can attempt these uh, answers over there and after the quiz is done so we are also sharing a leaderboard okay so in the leaderboard it will show you your ranks so, so you can know your class like you know your rank one rank two rank three so you can compete with your friends also so an academy plus subscription features are that okay so you can learn life from the comfort of your home unlimited access to all the courses is given top educators of india are going to take the classes for you in one platform so that is an academy platform there is regular doubt clearing session so after about every three sessions so we are conducting conducting this fourth session okay fourth session is a doubt clearing session so in this session, so any doubts you have related to the uh, topics that are previously covered, so we will be uh, clearing your doubts in this session. So even if you do not have any doubts, so we can conduct a poll war here as well. Okay, so that is done. All right, then complete syllabus will be covered. Mentorship and guidance is given. Study material, practice test series, life test series, batch courses. So if you prefer to learn in a Hindi language, so you can go for Hindi batch okay and if you prefer to learn in English itself then you can go with the English batch so you will have different batches so you can prefer your batch in which you want to learn okay so you can go for that batch then here all courses which is mentioned so there are different courses that are launched by your different educators so you will have access to all of these courses if you are taking a plus subscription okay then daily practice session the weekly mock test series live quizzes daily mcq and subjective test series so you will have a benefit of all this if you are going for a plus subscription and if you want to know like how exactly this works so you can go for three months of subscription so if you are if you are planning to complete class 11 12 okay so you can go for this month of subscription like you know 12 months 18 months 
depending on your convenience okay and this is my referral code vani vyt okay so with this referral code you will be getting 20% off on the subscription okay so there is a offer with which you are getting 20% off so basically this is the offer okay so there is a mega offer where you can buy let's say you are buying a 12 months or more subscription okay so let's say you are buying 12 months of subscription so you will get free 2 months extension and that means you are getting 14 months of subscription here if you are going for a 12 months and on top of it so usually it will be 10% but you know until feb 18th so there is a offer where you are going to get 20% discount with the referral code vani yt okay so you can use this code to get 20% discount on your uh, on your subscription that is plus subscription okay and you know so this is anyway there with that you will also get free months that is extra two months free all right so if you have any queries like you know confused about your preparation journey like how to go about this one or have quer uh, queries about the subscription or want to know about the latest offer so you can just call away on this number so this one is 8585858585 so you can call here and you know the referral code is vani yt okay so with this referral code you will get 20% discount okay and extra 2 months of subscription you are getting only if you are going for 12 months and above subscription so let's get started so you know uh, i okay so today's session we are going to discuss about the structure of a i okay so what all will be there in a i one second let me just check i don't know why uh, again chat option is not available but anyway so i can uh, see that it is live itself <laughs> all right okay so here the eyes okay so in this case you know eyes are placed eyes are situated in the orbits okay so that is the bony orbit or a bony socket which is there so there you know eyeballs are placed so now you know the two eyes are located so location is important okay so make sure that you write the exact location okay so evaluation with respect to your board so that will look at the exact location like you know whatever sentence they have given in your textbook so they expect you to write the same exact sentence as given in your textbook so this is with respect to icsc evaluation that is why you might have noticed so even though they have written the answer lot of students lose the mark so they might have written that uh, eyes are located in the orbit okay so this is not the way so eyes are located in deep sockets or orbits on the front side of the head so this you need to mention or it is orbit can be here orbit can be this orbit or it can be anything okay so you need to make sure that so exact similar sentence has to be written so in that case what will happen so you your icsc is going to give you full marks okay so make sure that you are writing the exact location so you might have observed your question paper also so they'll mention right the exact location so they'll always mention exact location so you need to go for this okay then other than that so each eye is in the form of a ball okay so this is in the form of a ball and can be rotated with the help of six muscles so there are six muscles which are holding on to this eyeball okay then there is eyelids so the upper and the lower movable eyelids so they will protect the front surface of the eye so you know uh one second so now when we mention about the eyelid let me just move it okay so now when we mention about the eyelid you know you can see the upper eyelid and a lower eyelid so this eyelid can be used to shut out the light okay so that is to drop the light which is coming so shut out of a light can be done here so basically eyelid carries outwardly curved eyelashes also okay so there are eyelashes which will prevent the falling of a larger particle into the eye so now you know you have a eye here 
ओके सो विद आई सो बेसिकली दिस कैन यू नो वेन यू ओपन अप और क्लोज अप सो बेसिकली लाइट्स के नॉट पास थ्रू एंड इफ देर इज अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ लाइट दैट इज पासिंग थ्रू योर आई ओके सो यू नो देर इज अ चांस दैट द द लाइट विच इज एंटरिंग योर आई सो दिस कैन डिफ्रैक्ट स्कैटर सो देर इज अ मेलनिन पिगमेंट ऑल्सो विच इज प्रोवाइडिंग अ प्रोटेक्शन सो लॉर्ड्स ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन आर दी आर प्रोवाइडेड टू द आई इन अ डिफरेंट वे सो यू विल लर्न अबाउट इट इन टू डे सेशन ओके सो आईब्रोज आर वर्चुअली नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ अ आई ओके सो दीज आर एनी वे प्रोटेक्टिव इथ सेल्फ ओके सो हाउ दैट इज दे प्रिवेंट द रेन ड्रॉप और ट्रिकलिंग परस्पिरेशन दैट इज यू नो वेन यू स्वेट ओके सो देर इज अ चांस दैट दिस स्वेट कैन गेट एंटर लाइक यू नो इट कैन एंटर इन टू योर आई ओके सो यू नो अगेन दिस स्वेट कैन हैव अ लिटल अमाउंट ऑफ यूरिया ऑल्सो सो अगेन वी नीड टू गेट रीड ऑफ दिस यूरिया सो प्रिवेंशन कैन बी डन टू सम एक्सटेंट दैट इज बाय द आईब्रोज ओके टीयर ग्लैंड सो दिस वी कॉल एज अ लैक्राइमल ग्लैंड ओके सो ऑल दिज लोकेशन यू नीड टू नो सो विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टीयर ग्लैंड ऑल्सो लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम्स Uh, they have as the location of a lacrimal gland okay so these are located again the exact location okay so make sure that you write the exact location here so that is at the upper sideward portion of the orbit so 6 to 12 ducts of a gland pour the secretion over the front surface okay so movement of the eyelids spread the liquid which mainly serves as a lubricant so here now here is the eye all right so eye is over here then you know eyebrow is there all right so there is lacrimal gland which is present so this is a eye now okay so you know through these ducts so there are six ducts can be there or 12 pairs so can, can be there so 6 to 12 ducts we can find in here so these ducts are going to pour their secretion that is tear through the duct into the eye then it is going to lubricate the whole surface of the eye so here the lubrication is done okay so they lubricate the surface of the eye so that is with the help of a tear okay so this is done and you know so here we will see this one so the tears also keep the front surface of the eye clean okay so they'll keep your uh, front surface cleaner so that is by washing away the dust particles so you can see here this one is a lacrimal gland and you know there are ducts which are present so 6 to 12 ducts can be there which can pour their secretion now lysozyme enzyme will be there okay so this lysozyme enzyme what is there so this is responsible for killing of the germ so let's say uh, now since the eye is exposed to the outside environment so lot of germs can accumulate here so lot of germs can enter and you know immediately the lysozyme which is there so this is a germ killing substance so this is going to kill the germ okay and you know so lysozyme is since it is acting on a germ which is in drink so most of the uh, germs are not going to multiply as soon as the germ enters so lysozyme will kill it but in certain cases if or if at once if lot of germs are entering then there is a chance that you know the reddishness of eye okay so itching of eye so all this is because of the germs that have entered or it can be any dust or a, a pollen also so lysozyme will try its best to kill all the germs which have entered okay so tear ducts are going to drain off the liquid sac okay so this is now let's say there is too much of a water that is a uh, tear which is produced anyway lubrication will occur all over okay so that is throughout this one the lubrication is anyway occurring okay now what is going to occur is so excess amount of tear what is there so that will enter through these ducts which are there on the inner side so that is a lacrimal duct is present here as well okay now through this it will enter the lacrimal sac okay so it will enter the lacrimal sac so sac is like a bag okay so it is a bag structure so some amount of you know the tear will get stored there and after it is full so now this tear which is there in the lacrimal duct so that will start rolling down it will enter your nose so whenever you are crying or whenever you are expressing your joy in the form of a tear okay 
so in all those cases basically you know you can find the uh, you know a certain uh, droplets that are coming out through your nose or through the throat okay so this is all because of the tear gland which is connected that is eye which is connected to the nose through this lacrimal duct and you know the nasolacrimal duct is going to pour the secretion that is tear into your nose also okay <coughs> so when do we use this uh, tear gland that is basically the lacrimal gland okay so this happens through above mentioned duct. so now due to irritation or emotional state so tear gland will pour a lot of liquid that is watery eyes or overflow as tears so you will shed tear both in grief as well as in joy so functions of tears so lubricate the surface of a eye okay so eye surface lubrication can be done wash away the dust particles so you know the dust particles which have entered so all those will be washed away with this one so this also helps in killing of the germs so you know as the lysozyme is present so this is gonna kill away the germs okay just a second then also there is to communicate the emotions okay so emotions can be communicated so that is express the emotions with this as well that is with a tear okay so any doubt till here i hope it is clear all right so next is the conjunctiva okay so conjunctiva is actually a thin membrane which you can find covering the entire front part of the eye okay so this is going to cover your entire front part of the eye okay then where it is exactly attached it is continuous with the inner lining of the eyelid now you know you have this eyelid here right so it is in continuation with the eyelid like this so let's say this is now a conjunctiva which we usually draw like this okay so we are drawing this one you know this is in continuation with the eyelid which is there okay so down also this is in continuation with the eyelid all right so this is inner lining of the eyelid so this is in continuation then you know over the cornea this is covering okay and over the cornea so let's say here the cornea is there okay so now over this cornea what will happen so this conjunctiva is forming a single layer of transparent epithelial that means a single layer of tissue will be there that is transparent epithelial tissue that is a squamous type we can find or you know basically the one which is not opaque okay so it will be completely transparent that means uh, only a single layer is there so it is a simple type of epithelium not the compound one okay so here it will become a single layer of epithelium so you must have often heard about the eye disease that is conjunctivitis okay so in which this outermost layer turns red okay so outermost layer of a eye what is there so this is gonna turn red okay so how does it turn red so that is because of the infection the viral infection if the virus has attacked your eyes so you know it will become red as your blood okay that is you mainly the wbc's will rush in there so wbc's will try to fight off the germs that have entered and that is how we can find the conjunctivitis whenever you hear the term i okay conjunctivitis also we can mention whenever itis is coming so this means that it is a inflammation okay so what exactly is inflammation inflammation means swelling okay so we can find a swelling of this layer okay so you might not feel that it has swollen but there will be a swelling because it is just a single layer of a conjunctiva will be there and it has swollen because of the viral infection and and that is how you can find a redness okay so this is with respect to conjunctivitis so bony orbit socket or uh, eyebrows the tear gland and the conjunctiva so all of these are there for the eye protection that is in their own way so now we will have a look at the structure of the eyeball okay so how exactly like what exactly is the structure of the eyeball so there are 
three layers which are present the wall of the eyeball is composed of three concentric layers are there okay so outer sclerotic is there middle choroid is there and then the inner retina yes can anybody tell me like how many layers you are going to draw since they have asked three layers so since three layers are there how many lines will you draw for a three layer yes anybody here okay i'll uh, just see about this one one second i'll uh, take the different colorations for this all right so let's draw the sclera now okay so sclera is actually white in color so since i cannot take a white color so i'll just you know since the background itself is white i'll just take the different color okay so now we will draw the sclera okay so this is the outermost layer okay so this is sclera now okay so in sclera what happens one second so this is outermost one okay so sclera is present so sclera is actually the outermost layer all right so then you know so there is a cornea formation so now this one is the outermost one okay so this outermost in the front so sclera itself we need to draw two layers there why we need to draw two i mean two lines that is because we need to represent a layer okay so that is why always two layers have to be drawn in there okay so i'll just continue with this one so this is now forming a one layer that is the outermost layer which is there so outermost layer here is a sclera okay so this is now a outermost layer a sclera okay so i'll just uh, label them so now in the front so this is bulging okay so this is going to bulge all right so because of the bulging what we can find let me just move this okay so in the front this is bulging okay so this bulged part what is there so this we call as a cornea all right this is completely white one so this is sclerana okay so sclera and is white in color because it is a fibrous tissue is there so this is white and here the cornea part what is there so cornea is actually not white it is not opaque this is transparent one you know if this is opaque like you know if it is a white one the light cannot pass through that is why it will bulge out okay and because of the bulging you know so this is going to get transparent as well so this will be transparent the cornea is transparent and you know above the cornea like you know just beside the over here so i'll just try the conjunctiva so here is the conjunctiva which is present okay so conjunctiva is present as such so i'll just erase this part it did not come well okay so this part what is there so this is going to form a conjunctiva so this conjunctiva is in continuation with what upper eyelid and then a lower eyelid so this is in continuation so i'll just label this one so this is actually the conjunctiva okay so we just draw what we just draw the sclera and then the conjunctiva so you need to draw this okay and you know so this sclera you will represent a sclera by two lines right in also same thing and you know so you will be totally you will be drawing four lines four lines in order to represent a three layered structure so basically you need to draw four lines okay so outer sclerotic or we can also mention it as a sclera middle one is a choroid okay so next is a choroid layer and then innermost one is a retina okay so you can see this one is a conjunctiva here okay outermost one is a sclera middle one is a uh, choroid and then a inner one is retina so let's have a look at the sclerotic layer or a sclera explanation then you know you we can draw the structure of a choroid and we will see so what all is there in a sclera so this one is a 
tough one or a tough fibrous tissue and this is white in color okay so this is gonna be white in color so since the background is white is white okay so i did not draw it white okay so this is gonna be white in color now the white portion on the front of the eyes you see this white portion of your eye right so this is mainly a sclerotic layer but you can see also that there is a bulged part which is here at the front so that is actually the cornea okay so white portion on the front of the eye is a sclerotic uh, layer which itself is visible through the conjunctiva then it will bulge out and becomes a transparent in the front region where it covers the colored part of the eye what is the colored part of the eye you know we all have you know different colored eyes are there so there is iris is the one which is providing the colored part of the eye okay so iris if it is blue in color we mentioned that he or she is having a blue eye okay so the if it is uh, you know uh, so this is one second where is the cursor okay so here we say that if the iris is blue color so we say that the eye is blue color okay so in the same way if the eye is having like you know green colored iris is there so in that case that they we say that the person is having a i mean green colored eye then you also might have observed the cat eyes okay so that is cat eye is basically somewhat yellowish colored uh, iris will be there okay so not exactly yellowish anyway okay okay then you know there is a brown eye also so in brown eyes what would be the case there so let's say this is anyway not brown color okay so brown eye some of them will have a brown eye so in that case so this is because of the brown coloration of the iris so the coloration of the iris itself is forming the different eye structures okay so it is the iris which is the colored part of the eye now about this iris itself so till here you can see so till here this all white part what you find so that is all sclera okay now you see this iris over here so i'll just draw it your iris and show you so you can just have a look at your iris so this is the iris from the front view okay so in the center you will find a pupa okay that is pupil then you know there are radial muscles which are present here like this okay so these are the radial muscles and then you can find the circular muscles also like this okay so this is the iris now you know the sclera layer so here surrounding and all sclera is there okay so surrounding and all a sclera is present over here so this will be completely whitish in color okay now what will happen as this sclera has to come over this iris part okay so this has to come over this iris part so here this will bulge okay so this i i mean this part the sclera is going to bulge okay so sclera will bulge and here in this part so this will become transparent okay so only at this particular part the bulging of a sclera will occur and that we call as a cornea okay so cornea will be there so now here so inside what can be there so now this is forming a cornea here so inside you will find the iris so shall we draw the iris now so i'll just draw the iris so that you can understand okay so now this one over here so here the iris will be there all right so iris covering this iris part this bulged area is forming the cornea okay now iris is that so this is going to form the iris over here so now this iris okay so it is actually an extension of a choroid itself here you can see so sometimes i'll go to iris part so you are i hope you understood about the colored part so that is nothing but the iris okay so sometimes the cornea what is there so that is the cornea of patient will turn opaque okay so now this part what is there so this is actually transparent but in certain cases this can turn opaque okay and in those cases it will become non-functional and we need to get rid of or we through the surgeries so basically 
healthy defective cornea can be removed or it can be replaced by a healthy cornea from a donated eye so you know there are a lot of individual who do the donation of their eye like you know when they die so they can uh, donate their eye and they can you know basically after the death so they'll be giving their eye right so same eye we can take so we can take the cornea from them and you know the defective cornea can be replaced by a healthy cornea all right so same way now you know there is a choroid layer which we are going to discuss so this is richly supplied with a blood vessel for providing a nourishment to the eye so this contains a melanin pigment which will prevent the light rays from reflecting and scattering inside the eye so in the front of the eye the choroid will expand to form a ciliary body then the smooth muscles in the eye so they will alter the shape of the lens so i'll just explain it here so one thing i want to uh, check this out uh, here is i'll just explain that okay so you know that the innermost layer is actually a choroid okay so here the next layer which i'm going to draw is a choroid layer okay so this choroid why i am drawing it in a red color because this is highly vascular that means it is supplied with the blood vessels okay so now in the front this is going to form a ciliary body like this okay so then the front this is going to form a ciliary body like this so now this is forming a ciliary body here okay and you know that this layer is actually having a melanin pigment okay so choroid layer is having a melanin pigment so what does the melanin help in so melanin is going to help in prevention of scattering of these light which enters so it will prevent the light that can scatter inside and you know it can damage so in that case melanin will protect your eyes so now this one is a ciliary body over here okay and i'll just uh, mention this one so the next layer here what i have drawn so this one is a choroid okay so choroid is vascular okay so in the front it is going to become uh, it will expand so that will form a ciliary body okay so there is a formation of a ciliary body then you know further so let's draw a black colored eye okay so because that is the common one so what we can do is so we can just you know expand this one so there is i need to draw the uh, iris part here because iris is basically again from the uh, ciliary body that is extension of this layer itself okay so that is extension of a choroid itself is forming this structure that is basically a uh, what is it called uh, the iris okay so i'll just draw the iris here so now this part over here so from here the extension what is there it went reverse one second okay so this is going to form a iris all right second what happened right okay so now you know the extension itself is going to give us a iris now okay so extension of choroid will form a iris here so same way here also there is a iris which is formed okay so now this one is a iris which leaves a circular opening okay so circular opening is left out so i will just label these structures now so this will give us a iris part okay and this opening a circular opening what is there so that is basically forming the pupil okay so this one is a pupil here so this part is pupil all right and you know the light has to pass through the lens that is basically it has to pass through the pupil so we will draw the lens also here okay so i'll just change the color of this so that i can draw a lens over here okay so here the lens is located okay so lens is located here 
which is exactly held in position okay so this is held the lens is held in position that is by the ciliary body okay so along with that there are suspensory ligaments which are holding on to this one okay so there are suspensory ligaments which are holding on to this one so now i'll just label this one so this will give us a suspensory ligament okay so this is a suspensory ligament and the other one what is there so this one also on the other side so that is also a suspensory ligament and here you know there is a lens structure okay so where is the cursor okay so i will draw it here itself one second my eraser is not working what happened all right anyway lens i'll show it there itself all right so i thought since there is optic nerve which is coming so i thought i'll uh, draw the other one so anyway so this one is actually a lens now okay so this part which is there so this will give us the lens all right so now you know so we have drawn only two layers so sclera is drawn choroid is drawn the choroid extension itself will form a ciliary body the choroid its extension itself will give us a iris part okay then it will leave a small circular opening so that is the pupil and you know with the help of suspensory ligament the ciliary body the lens is held in position okay so we have drawn only two layer so let's have a look at the second one that is a choroid so this is richly supplied with the blood vessel for providing a nourishment to the eye and it has a melanin okay so which will prevent prevent the light rays from reflecting and scattering inside the eye so in the front of the eye so this choroid is going to expand to form a ciliary body okay now what is going to happen so containing circular muscles the smooth muscles in the ciliary body so they are going to alter the shape of the lens okay so alteration in the shape of the lens we can see with the help of these ciliary bodies itself now iris is also an extension okay from the choroid or of the choroid which is partially covering the lens leaving a circular opening this we saw pupil okay so blue coloration brown black coloration of the eye so this is mainly because of the iris itself so different coloration of the eye what we see so because of the iris itself it is a different colors we can see and iris is covered on the front by the cornea which is again an extension or a bulge part of a sclera okay so pupil name has been derived from a latin word pupa meaning is that the doll okay so which in this context refer to the tiny image of one self seen reflected in another's eye okay so the iris contain radial muscles to widen so there are iris which is there so this will have a radial muscle which will widen and also circular muscles are there so that will constrict the pupil okay so now this adjustment of the size of the pupil okay so now depending on adjustment of a pupil so this is going to regulate the amount of light that has to enter through your eyes so let's say uh here i'll draw okay so now this one is the iris here is the pupil a circular opening is there so radial muscles are there okay so these are all radial muscles which are there okay and then you know circular muscles are also there so there is a circular muscle as well okay so this iris contains a radial muscles to widen and circular muscles to constrict so radial muscles will widen this one that means this now pupil what is there so this can get widened okay so this can get wider also because of the radial muscles okay now you know circular muscles will constrict the pupil so both are there so in this case you know amount of light that has to enter into this one so if it is a widened one more light can enter okay so if 
pupil is a constricted pupil okay so very less amount of light can enter because the space for entry of the light is very less in the constricted pupil as compared to the widened pupil so in widened pupil more light can enter okay more light can enter but as compared to the constricted one so very less light can enter okay so you can easily observe this by throwing a torch light into the eyes by looking in a mirror okay so in dim or a dark light so pupil is going to be dilated while in bright light it is constricted okay so in bright light this is constricted the pattern and arrangement of a iris muzzle is unique for every individual that is why you might have seen the iris scan they will perform okay so for individual identification okay so in individual identification is done so in your mobile also you are having a eye scan i guess right so that is basically you know the iris which is arranged you know the arrangement of these muscles so this is going to be unique for each and every individual okay so depending on that individual identification is also done all right so therefore these are also source of an individual's identification so that is for a iris uh yes any doubt till here i hope it is clear okay so next one is actually the retina layer okay so this is the innermost layer which is sensitive to light okay and it is the one which is having the sensory cells so rods and cones are present there okay so we will just see the structure of that all right so i'll just draw it and explain it here uh which one shall i take so maybe i can take this one okay so you know there is actually the iris okay so iris is having a structure okay so the retina is done iris i mean the, the choroid is done so next layer is going to give us the retina part okay so this is now a retina okay so retina is basically having a rich supply of sensory cells so now this layer what you find so this is a retina okay so retina is having a sensory cells okay so sensory cells or sense cells are nothing but the rods and cones you can find in there so you i think you cannot see with the yellow color i'll just change this one okay so these are sensory cells okay so sensory cells that is rods and cones we can find in here okay so rods and cones what are there so these are basically located here and specifically you know you can find more of a rod cell so let's say here this is a rod shaped structure this is a rod cell other one is a cone shell like this okay so you know you can find more rods in here okay so more rods you can find and only few here and there you can find cones in there all right so now with respect to that all right so i can just show it to you like you know i, I just don't want to uh, like you know uh, make it clumsy here so more of a rods we can find in here okay more of a rods we can find so i'll just draw certain part only a part i am going to draw so everywhere so more of a rods can be there in the retina part okay very few cones will be there okay so very less number of cones we can find in here okay so this is with respect to cone now okay so throughout the retina so throughout the retina we can find more rods and cones will be very less then there is yellow spot so you can see in this diagram i'll just show you the diagram here so this one is a yellow spot okay so at yellow spot so now let's say this is here is the yellow spot so at yellow spot you can find more of cones okay so now this one is a yellow spot here okay so one second i 
because I need to draw optic nerve there so I'll just take it here itself so yellow spot is here so at yellow spot you can find more of a cones okay and at retina you can find more of a rods all right so this is the case so here more of a cones will be there so now here as you can see the arrangement is done with respect to rods and cones and rods when we mention rods are having a pigment called as rhodopsin okay so rod cells or the inner end rod like are sensitive to dim light but do not respond to color okay so they contain a pigment called as a rhodopsin or a visual purple so rod cells are distributed almost throughout the retina okay so throughout the retina we can find more of a rods and the pigment is rhodopsin now the cone when we mention the inner ends are going to be conical and these are sensitive to bright light okay and these are responsible for a color vision so they have a pigment called as iodopsin okay so cone cells are mostly confined to the yellow spot so we can find more of cones in a yellow spot okay then yellow spot when we mention so distribution of rods and cones is not uniform okay so particular spot called as a macula lutea okay so there is a macula lutea the macula meaning is pit luteum is yellow or we can say yellow spot or a phobia centralis so every alternate name you need to know okay so every alternate name is very important so you will get confused you will you might keep thinking that what exactly is fovea centralis what exactly is macula lutea so they'll ask you the location of yellow spot okay or they might ask you the function of yellow spot uh, where exactly it is located so they might not say yellow spot so they'll say where is what like what is the location of fovea centralis so you shouldn't keep on thinking like what exactly is fovea centralis here okay so make sure that you know every alternate name which is given in your textbook you need to know that okay so here this lies where exactly yellow spot is present lies at the back of the eye almost at the center on the horizontal axis of the eyeball so this you need to mention so these are the keywords horizontal axis then you know back of the eye okay so almost at the center so you need to write these keywords okay so make sure that you are writing a keyword also and this contains more of a maximum number of a sensory cell so that means more of a cones will be there so okay and you know the region of brightest vision so the color vision we are getting mainly because of the cones itself so brightest vision also because all the color differentiation can be done here at the yellow spot then you know the also color vision so rest of the retina is having fewer cones okay more of a rods we can find so i had drawn more rods and very few cones at the retina and at yellow spot you will find more of a cones but very less of a rod so yellow spot is the place of best vision of normal eye so this is the reason why you are uh, why you move your eyes from word to word as you read through the line that is in a printed Paid, okay so that is now with respect to blind spot so this we call as a area of no vision okay so area of no vision we mention over here okay so this is because you know i'll just show you this part okay so here in this case now from everywhere so all of these nerves are going to end okay okay so this is going to continue so there is the optic nerve so this is going to the brain okay so this one is actually the optic nerve okay so from each of these okay so from each of these you know the nerve endings the neuron endings what are there so they are going to join in okay so the, from each of these the axons okay nerve fibers are going to join in so from each of these the nerve fibers are coming so from here also from each of these the nerve fibers are coming and they'll be joining and this is connecting to the brain so that the interpretation of an image can be done so from each of these you know the nerve fibers will arise so there are lot of cones over here so here also you know uh, rods you can find so many rods you will find 
थ्रू आउट द रेटिना ओके सो मेनी रॉड्स विल बी देयर थ्रू आउट द रेटिना सो फ्रॉम ईच ऑफ दीज द एग्जॉन फाइबर ओके और अ नर्व फाइबर विच इज कमिंग सो दैट विल बी जॉइनिंग द ऑप्टिक नर्व विच इज कंट आई मीन विच इज अगेन कनेक्टेड विद द ब्रेन ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इट विल वर्क सो नाउ दिस इज कनेक्टेड टू द ब्रेन एंड एज ऑल द नर्व फाइबर्स आर कमिंग एंड जॉइनिंग एट दिस पर्टिक्युलर स्पॉट सो दिस स्पॉट इज एक्चुअली अ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट ओके सो दिस स्पॉट इज ब्लाइंड स्पॉट सो वन कैन नॉट सी एट दैट पर्टिक्युलर इमेज सो ह्योर द इमेज फॉर्मेशन यूजली अकर्स एंड दिस वन इज एक्चुअली अ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट सो लेट्स हैव अ लुक नाउ ओके सो ब्लाइंड स्पॉट वेन वी मैंशन लैटरल टू द येलो स्पॉट ऑन द नेजल साइड इज द ब्लाइंड स्पॉट ओके सो दिस इज अ लोकेशन सो देर आर नो सेंसरी सेल्स हियर एंड देर फोर दिस इज अ पॉइंट ऑफ नो विजन सिंस देर आर नो सेंसरी सेल्स एट दैट पॉइंट सो देर आर नो देर इज नो विजन सो दिस इज द पॉइंट एट विच ऑल द नर्व फाइबर्स फ्रॉम ऑल द सेंसरी सेल्स ऑफ द रेटिना सो दे विल कन्वर्ट सो ऑल द एग्जॉन्स ऑल द नर्व फाइबर्स फ्रॉम ऑल द sensory cells like rods and cones so they are all coming together and they are converging and they are bundling together to leave the eyeball in the form of a optic nerve so you could see here all of them are coming through okay and all of them are bundling over here and then they are leaving so axon fiber is leaving through this one that is through the optic nerve and it is connected to the brain so this spot is a blind spot okay so now moving on to the next one so there is a lens so you saw the lens position so lens is a transparent biconvex crystalline structure okay so this is a transparent one it is a crystalline body located just behind the pupil okay so just behind this pupil so let's say iris pupil and behind you can find the lens there okay so it contains transparent lens fibers that is thin cells which have lost their nuclei okay then the lens is collectively held in position by a fibers called as a suspensory ligament is there okay so suspensory ligament along with the ciliary i mean uh, ciliary body so they are holding on to this lens in a proper position okay so there is a ciliary body and then a suspensory ligament okay so suspensory ligament and ciliary body so they are holding them in position okay so on which a contraction and relaxation occurs so change the shape of the lens also that is with the contraction and relaxation of these muscles for viewing the objects at the different distances now we have two chambers in our eyes the one which is there so that is the aqueous chamber and the other one is a vitreous chamber okay so aqueous chamber is basically the front chamber between the lens and then the cornea okay so it is filled with the aqueous humor that is a watery fluid so this this will keep the eye moist and uh, moist and protect it from the physical shock and also it refracts the light okay now the vitreous chamber will have a vitreous humor okay so this is basically eyeball behind the lens so this is filled with the jelly like thicker fluid so there is a jelly like thicker fluid which we call as a vitreous humor so this vitreous humor serves two functions so it helps in keeping the shape of the eyeball okay and it protects the retina and its nerve ending so we will just have a look here so now this is the structure okay so this part is actually the aqueous humor the watery fluid will be there so this part is aqueous chamber here okay so this is forming the aqueous chamber so aqueous chamber will have a aqueous humor and this one is a vitreous chamber so vitreous chamber will have a vitreous humor so this whole part what you find so this is a vitreous humor so vitreous humor when we mention so it is a jelly like fluid okay so this will maintain the shape of the eyeball and this one is a watery fluid okay so you know the functions with respect to these two chambers having their own liquid so it helps in keeping the shape of eyeball it protects the retina and its nerve endings as well okay so i hope it is uh, everything is clear
okay so we will just go with the question so name and enzymes this is with respect to tears which can kill the germs so it is a lysozyme okay so next is innermost concentric layer of layer of wall of eyeball is innermost is retina outer is sclerotic middle is choroid and then there is a retina okay so sclera is made of tough fibrous tissue and is white in color yes this is true and dash layer of the eye is richly supplied with the blood vessel so it is a choroid cornea then sclera retina so this is which layer it is actually the choroid layer which is vascular that means vascular means it is supplied with the blood vessels okay so before i end the session so let me just say about this one so you get one more chance for prodigy so see you on feb 27 so where you can crack it to win prizes worth rupees 10 crore so here in this case again you can win macbook the iphone you know the amazon watchers the echo dot all right and other than that you know you will be getting a scholarship also so you can use my referral code vani yt okay so with this referral code you can unlock the course okay so un for unlocking you can use this one so vani yt is going to help you so this code is is going to help you unlock this one so you can take up this aptitude test so you have a chance to win this uh, prizes worth rupees 10 crore so basically you are going to win a, a grant for your college also like you know uh, scholarship you will be getting so the udan batch it is again the mode of delivery is hindi here the champions batch the mode of delivery is english here so these are the ongoing batches also we are conducting a one shot revision on uh, an academy one second okay so also we are conducting a one shot revision on an academy platform so all you need to do is uh, download the an academy learners app and start attending this session so all these features you can try for free so what you can do is download the an academy learner app open the app and click on get started then you can enter your mobile number you can sign up using the email id then you need to choose the class 6 to 12 okay as you are in class 9 10 11 or 12 so based on your class so there again you will have a icsc category also so you can choose this category and you know so you can choose the language of your preference like english hindi or english okay so based on your preference you can choose the language and press next then you know you can use the referral code vani yt to unlock many of the courses which are there on an academy to unlock them and use them well okay so this is again with uh, vani yt you will be getting 20 percent off also so basically you will, you are going to get 20 percent discount on the plus subscription and also we have a offer so if you are buying 12 months of subscription so extra two months of subscription so this offer is anyway there with that you will get a 20 percent off on uh, subscription so with the referral code vani yt okay so you can subscribe our channel so that is an academy icsc and isc boards okay so all the classes whenever classes are there so you'll be getting a notification also download the app that is an academy learners app and attend free live session or you can go for the subscription as well okay so see you all in the next session bye bye everyone take